Well, Governor Wall signs the first bill of the 2023 legislative session. It includes more than $100 million in tax breaks, help for student borrowers, restaurants, and other businesses. That was late last week, so what can we expect this week and in the weeks moving forward in this a democratic controlled session joining me now is chairman of minnesota's democratic party ken martin good to see you ken thanks Gr for joining us great to see you thanks for having me really appreciate it this is this is a big one you know democrats promise to be aggressive to move quickly and here we are seeing the first bill signed uh does it include everything that you had hoped for well first let me just say that i'm really uh, buoyed by the fact that dflers who were just elected to a trifecta which you know this is only the second trifecta in 32 years, so it's very rare that we see that, that they're moving quickly to deliver on the promises that we made, our party made, our candidates made to Minnesotans. And of course, you saw that with the tax conformity bill, which you're referencing, which is uh, years in the making, frankly, and it's uh, long overdue. As you mentioned, it's gonna benefit not only, you know, uh, thousands of uh, small business owners and others throughout the state, ta uh, property tax owners, as well as uh, student loan bor borrowers, a whole host of people are gonna benefit from, from finally bringing our tax code into conformity with the federal tax code. And so it's a great thing. Uh, it was bipartisan, you know, de Democrats and Republicans supported. The governor signed it this week. But, you know, it's just a, as I said, it's a sign of what DFLers promised to Minnesotans that we we're going to use the power we have to make a big difference. It's, it reminds me of that old Methodist saying, right? Use the power you have when you have it to make the biggest difference for as many people as you can. And DFLers are already doing that. And I'm proud of them. And there's lots more that, you know, has been uh, the priority list. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at what do we expect to be next? Well, a couple of big bills that are already moving that I think are going to have a huge impact on this state and, and on Minnesotans' uh, quality of life, of course, is paid uh, family and medical leave, making sure that working families, if they have a sick one at home, that they can take the time they need to care for that individual without having to lose their job, as, a, as an example. That also has bipartisan support. It's supported by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Minnesota business uh, owners understand that this is the right thing to do to make sure that their employees can take care of loved ones. That's just one thing that's going to be moving pretty quickly. Of course, you know, education funding is, is critical in this state. We've seen our education funding drop to, to record lows in recent years. And with a $17 billion surplus, we have an opportunity to actually reinvest in the future of this state, which is uh, our Minnesota children. And as you and I are both parents, we understand the need to make sure our education system is fully meeting their needs as they're the future of this state and this country. And so we're excited about that. And, you know, also, um, you know, we talked about uh, actually legalizing uh, recreational adult use cannabis, and that's going to happen probably this session or next. A lot of the promises that we made to Minnesotans. And one other bill that's moving forward uh, pretty quickly this week is protecting um, uh, abortion protections in this state, which was a huge issue in this last election. And DFLers uh, want to make sure that we um, codify these protections well into the future by putting them into state statutes. There's a lot more on the agenda, of course, you know, uh, a, a lot of uh, ideas out there, you know, and, and and I'm grateful for that. Uh, we need more ideas in the mix than not. And uh, again, DFLers are taking advantage of the opportunity right now to be bold, to move forward with the vision that they laid out for Minnesotans. And I, I, I'm, I'm proud of them. One thing also that kind of switches gears a little bit, but that was catching headlines this week with former Hennepin County Sheriff getting his old job back. And now there's a Republican senator who is saying, hmm, maybe we should take a look at this 45-year-old law that allowed this. What is your take on this? Well, look, I, I, I don't know a lot about the particulars. Uh, I do think that Senator Limmer is on to something here, which is, you know, clearly if, if someone uh, breaks a law in law enforcement, they probably shouldn't then uh, be promoted to another job and, and given a pay raise. And so I think it's worth looking at. We obviously have to make sure that we do it right. Uh, 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 that there's no unintended consequences, but the reality is, is that um, you know I, I'm generally supportive of that. You, sh you, you shouldn't uh, be able to get away with something and then get a, another job with a pay raise on top. Yeah, lots going on at the Capitol, yeah, to is, say the least. Sure. All yeah. right, Ken Martin, thank you. We appreciate you. your time. Thank well, you, Leah. Till next time. It, yeah.